thank you again. Um, hi again. So <coughs> in this talk, I will show you how to um, improve the efficiency of private circuits uh, by recycling some of the randomness inside. So I thought it would have been uh, as, as exemplary, starting with a really concrete example of uh, recycling, which is the recycle of some of my previous slides. So indeed, we are again in the context of say channel attacks, and we are again in the context of the t probing model. And uh, yeah, so t probing model for the ones who were not here before uh, means, that, means that the adversary can access up to t values in the circuit. Um, and the required probing is the existence of a simulator, which can simulate adversary view by um, without accessing to the secret. And the important countermeasure, an important countermeasure is, uh, against such an attacks is masking, uh, which consists in randomizing the secret uh, by splitting it into n random shares. And yeah, so during this talk, I will just mention, I will just talk about the Boolean masking, where the encoding and the decoding are represented here in these blocks. So uh, private circuits will have an encoder and a decoder at the beginning and at the end of the, uh, of the execution, which will split and recompose the secret. And internally, we will have some um, linear gadget which operates component-wise and don't use randomness, and some non-linear uh, gadgets, like the multiplication, which actually makes a really heavy use of randomness. And the current multiplications can use the O of n squared random bits, where n is the number of the, uh, of the shares. So generating randomness is one uh, of the most, most, most slow tasks in the execution of a circuit. Uh, and, and one of the, indeed, a lot of research has been done recently in order to improve uh, the number of randomness needed. And all this research so far focused on uh, improving the randomness needed in one single uh, multiplication scheme. But of course, we need to refresh every time the, uh, the, um, the randomness for each execution of a different multiplication scheme. So there are some theoretic lower bound to the number of randomness needed for guaranteed privacy in, in uh, the multiplication scheme. So uh, we try to open up a new research approach which is to reduce our randomness between different gadgets. So, uh, in this talk, we start with a new security definition that will be this T SCR, so T security with common randomness. I will give you some composability results about this property, and I will show you a new multiplication scheme which will fit this property, and then uh, we will see again a case study on the S box of the AS, and a particular case for order one. So I'll give more in detail some background about the t probing model. So in particular, uh, two are the main properties that we um, should satisfy. So one is the TNI. So in the TNI property, so T non-interference, non that the adversary can observe up to T probes, so observations, on a gadget. And in order to show that a gadget is TNI, we have to show the existence of a simulator which uh, simulate adversaries view with only up to t shares of each input. So the drawback of this, uh, of this uh, definition is that this doesn't give any security, uh, any uh, security, any guarantee on the security, um, on a secure composition of this gadget. So this means in some cases it can be secure composable, but in some cases maybe it, it cannot be. So a stronger definition is that t as an i, t strong on interference where this is actually um, guarantee secure composability uh, between TSNI gadgets. So this means that the output of a gadget, TSNI, can be input to the second gadget that is TSNI. So uh, the property that we require uh, is the following. So we have T1 probes on the internal wires and T2 probes on the output wires. And we have to guarantee that the simulation of the probes either on the internal and on the external, uh, on the output wires, can be done by using at most T1 of the uh, input shares. So this gives a kind of independence between the number of output probes and the number of uh, input shares needed. And that's why then the output can be used as input. Uh, next. So um, our uh, security definition is a, bit more, is a bit different from the previous one because it actually involves a number of gadgets because uh, we will give a kind of uh, global simulation, global simulation requirement, 
on some gadgets, so here I have an example for just two, which internally use exactly the same randomness. So let's consider two gadgets which internally use the randomness R and T probes where T1 are on the first gadget and T2 are on the second gadget. So saying that this set of gadget is TSCR means um, requiring the existence of a simulator which can simulate adversity view on G1 by using at most n minus 1 of A and B and n minus two, and for this two, n minus 2 input shares of A prime and B prime. So a composition uh, result, um, we can see here a composition result. So if we group the uh, gadgets in some blocks of gadgets, so in some regions, and consequently, uh, these blocks share the same randomness. So here in the picture, whenever I will use the same color, this means that internally they use the same uh, vector randomness. Uh, in this case, we can affirm that the entire blocks are each other uh, TSCR. So this means that we can take a circle C, where each of the gadgets has fresh randomness, that is how it happens now, and we can divide it in some blocks that internally we use the same randomness and this should be still secure if these blocks are TSCR and TSNI because also we want that they are composable so uh, yeah so far it was, uh, it was pretty easy but we need to see if actually exists a multiplication scheme and a refreshing scheme that use this um, that fulfill this property so I'll show you now how we design our multiplication scheme and which are the properties that we, feel, that we think um, are, are needed in order to guarantee TSER. So the first property is the TF non-completeness without fresh randomness. So we saw before this concept from the threshold implementation. This is a slightly different slightly, uh, just because so we want that um, we will require that any combination up to TF of the output values without considering the, ran the randomness inside is independent of at least one of the output shares. So the intuition behind this, this requirement is that the worst case, which is actually the, the best case for the attacker, is to target only two gadgets. Because in this case, it's putting all this power, um, all this view, yeah, on, yeah, so he can have much more, uh, much more probes with common randomness. And so, um, yeah, the best case is if, it's pro if it put half of them on one and half of them on the second one. And of course, by, uh, if, even if we can cancel out all the randomness inside, since we have this TF no completeness, he, st he still cannot recover entirely the secret. So the second property, uh, ah, so actually this TF non completeness um, needs to have a bit, uh, a bit um, improvement where we go to all order odd, T odd. Because in this case, we have TF props on one gadget and TF props plus one on the other gadget. So we need that this plus one prop still don't break the, the non-completeness in few words. The second property that we want to achieve is the TSNI. So we want that our schemes are composable. Um, so this is, um, this is re reached by um, putting in a strategic way a randomness and one of these ways is to uh, ensure that for each of the output bits, so here we have an example for t equal to 2, for each of the output shares, we have t random bits, so here we have r1 and r2, and each of these random bits appear a second time on a different output share. So here we have, for example, r1 on c3 and r2 on c2. And this trick is useful because in this way we can simulate at random uh, each of the output shares. And lastly, uh, we require independence of the inputs. So this means that we want that the inputs of two gadgets, of multiple gadgets sharing the same randomness, are, are mutually independent encodings. In this way, indeed, when we drop some wires, um, the information that we get about the, uh, the, about the input shares is independent from the one that we get from the other, uh, from the other gadget. So here we have an example for t equal to 4. Uh, so I know it's a lot of letters, a lot of numbers, but I really wanted to take this case because it's really extraordinary 
indeed, um, actually guarantee non-completeness without randomness is not such a trivial task. So up to order three, we can achieve it with uh, t plus one shares. But from order, uh, from order, up to order three, yeah, from order four on, we have to increase the number of shares. So for example, for order four, we need to have up to seven shares. And I will show you now uh, briefly why the properties that I showed you before uh, works. So let's consider two gadgets uh, where we have two uh, probes on the first one and two probes on the second one. And for example, let's take an uh, adversary which observes C1 and C3 on the first one and C1 prime, C3 prime on the second one. So these are the values that we got. So in this way, we have here exactly the same random values. So a smart thing to do now for the adversary is to sum up these probes that he has. These are on the first gadget and these are on the second gadget. So in this way now, he has a view completely independent of, uh, of any randomness. He doesn't have any randomness anymore to hide a secret. But thanks to this TF non-completeness, um, we can actually simulate uh, the view with only five up to n shares needed. So he cannot recover the secret. Yeah, and an interesting uh, but particular case is the one of parallel multiplications. So let's consider, for example, a circuit which is only composed by parallel multiplications with independent inputs. So we can reuse the randomness inside, always. And so in this method, we can actually mask the entire circuit with only uh, a fixed amount of randomness, independently on the size of this circuit. But this is, of course, a really particular case. And yeah, indeed, uh, in particular, it's not, so, uh, it's not so common to have some multiplication scheme with independent inputs. So what happens if actually uh, two multiplication schemes don't receive independent inputs? So this property was actually, we actually overlooked a, a, a bit about this property in, this, in some of our previous um, uh, works on this paper, we thought it was actually sufficient to have just outputs that were outputs of a TSCR gadget. But we, we figured out that actually this is not sufficient, so we need to create independence. And unfortunately, the only way we found, but probably there are, there are others, is to put some randomness. So we have this trick, we have a gadget creating independence. Here you see um, an example for t equal to two which actually use less randomness than the normal. So this use uh, actually uh, n minus one random bits for, uh, for n. But this is dang <laughs> a dangerous gadget because it's TNI. So we cannot always compose it. So we have to be really careful when we use it. But what we have is that if before the output of a multiplication scheme would be dependent, now after this gadget, they are, they are independent. So we can use this output as input of multiplication, and in this way, this input will be independent. Um, let's see now how to build a refreshing scheme, which is TSER. It's much easier than for a multiplication, because we saw, um, yeah, we saw before the refreshing only operates component-wise. So for each output, we will only have one component. component. So the TF non-completeness is widely uh, satisfied, it's really easily satisfied. And for the TSNI, uh, we can just take the same distribution of the multiplication scheme, of the randomness in the multiplication scheme, and we will still achieve TSNI. We need an example for T equal to 4 is this one. So probably you don't remember exactly these numbers, but they're exactly the same random bits that were before in the same uh, position of before. And uh, it requires t times n random n, or of t times n random n elements. So let's see now um, how can we apply this to ASS box. So we chose to study this case because we have um, we have 200 of these blocks in the AES because we have around 20 uh, parallel parallel uh, computation per 10 rounds. So we also have to remember that all of this output of the round will be input of another round afterwards. And the idea is to use for all these 200 blocks always the same randomness in this gadget, in this block. So let's see step by step what can, what can we do with the tools that we have so far. 
So first of all, we have to uh, check independence and dependence in order to see if we can use or not the randomness. And I remind you another time that I will use the, I will use the same color for gadgets of the for gadgets using the same randomness. So for the refreshing, we saw it was pretty easy. We don't need independence because they are really powerful. We just have one share with an human observation, so we can easily reuse randomness here. And for the first round, um, we have that the inputs are independent. So we can reuse the randomness between this multiplication. But now, this reusing will make all the other uh, wires dependent between, the, between these blocks. So we need now to use our tree and to put this independent gadget and to check actually that this is possible. So that this is actually composable. And in this case, it is. So now the only, uh, oh, so now we can reuse randomness among these multiplications. But still, we have a problem. Because here we want again an independent output, because this will be an, the input of the next one. So for the first round, the inputs here are trivially are normally independent, but for the second one we need independence. And this time we cannot use our trick. Because if we put here this independent gadget, we will not have any more a composable gadget. So unfortunately the only uh, way in order to have this is to put totally fresh randomness, to put Multiplication schemes that don't, don't share randomness anymore. And of course, we don't need here the independent gadget anymore. But in this way, we have blocks that are TSER and they are TSNI, so composable and secure with common randomness. And we can use exactly this randomness for all of these 200 blocks that we have in the circuit. So, a special case for first order. So I don't have much time to, to show you the algorithm for this one, also because there are a lot. Uh, so but the idea is to use alternatively for first order, so in the case when we have only one observation possible, uh, two random bits. So we can mask any circuit of any side, sites with only two random bits. And the idea is to modify all the algorithms, even the linear ones, the refreshing and the multiplication, such a way that every time they inject only one random bit, and they will cancel out the previous randomness. <coughs> and in this way, all these values of these wires in the circuit will depend only on one random bit. And uh, yeah, only on one random bit, and they have always a fixed form. And this is an example for, um, yeah, this orange is uh, R1, and this um, green is R2. And we use alternatively um, R1 and R2, uh, we, still say, we still run anti privacy. So here's some performance evaluation. Um, so here on the left column, uh, we have the case, so these are the cost to the um, random generator uh, without uh, re re using common randomness. And these are the ones with using common randomness. And this is the end, so this is the, how the number of shares increased with the, uh, with the order. So yeah, we can see that we have pretty much uh, uh, we have pretty much an increase in the in uh, O of t square, and uh, we always have at this uh, the order eleven that we show here. We always have uh, uh, less cost to the to the to the random generator. So we have this improvement, but of course it's a bit balanced because we also have more computation sometimes. So in conclusion, I show that the reusing randomness among gadgets can be possible under certain conditions. And this can open up to a new direction approach in order to limit one of the um, drawbacks of masking schemes. And still a lot of work can be done in this direction. So for example, we can find a more efficient TSR multiplication scheme, or we can find different techniques in order to, to produce independence. Uh, thank you for your attention.